My name is Tom and I'm currently walking from John O'Groats to Land's End. This week I take on some of the most challenging hikes I've done, visiting some of the most remote areas in the whole of the Scottish Highlands. <sighs> Getting out of bed this morning, that warm sleeping bag and putting on damp gear it was tough, it was really tough. Everything is so wet from yesterday. That is Loch Broom, and Loch Broom is actually a sea lock. So I'm technically on the west coast. Let me go through here, come on. Come on. So this is where we leave the road and take on this big hill, a little daunted. making some progress. It's a tough slog up this hill. Oh, so steep. I need some water. I wonder how much further it is to the top of here. I'm up on top. It's actually relatively flat on top. Uh, pretty windy. I've just got my first glimpse over into the next valley and there are some huge mountains just looming over it. The weather has turned yet again. Scotland. <laughs> wow. I just realized I didn't have my GoPro and I left my bag where I was and decided to double back on myself. And I've had to walk two or three K back up the hill, back to where I crossed the river. And uh, thank goodness I found it. Uh, I've got a lot of footage on from yesterday, from today. I'm really pleased. Ah, oh. brief walk along the bottom of this valley. This is called Cory Halley. We've been following the road just for a short uh, few hundred meters. But now we head up the other side. We have our second hill to get over. I've just stopped for a bit. I've decided that before I tackle this hill, I need some food. Couscous, and I'm gonna empty a soup packet into it as well. I've actually got some of these mushrooms left over from last night. So I'll put them in there as well. That food filled a gap. I'm feeling a lot better now, a lot stronger, a lot more energy. And we're just following this pretty nice road the whole way up. So it's quite easy walking. The views coming up are just insane. Look at this, I just come around the corner. And there's a huge waterfall. We've left the nice track we we're on and now it's much more rough and ready wow i'm being treated to spectacular mountain views i just feel tiny Look at this valley behind me. Wow, that is something else. And guess look what I've just spotted. It's home for the night. Home awaits. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Tomorrow, I'm gonna walk up through this valley. I've got a Villac to cross, which is like a pass in the mountains. And I'll get to Kinloch U, which is a small village, but it should have a shop where I can get some more supplies. And I'm also gonna check into the campsite, because I haven't been to a campsite yet. I would just like a shower, and I need to charge everything.
it looks like a really nice day today which was a welcome change all my clothes are starting to smell like damp they've just not had a chance to dry at all so yeah putting on damp clothes again this morning another wonderful boffy stay has been so good just to try and dry some stuff out i mean nothing has dried but nothing's wetter than it was i don't know what i'm going to do when i leave scotland and there's no more boffies can you believe it after all of that rain we've had we finally have a sunny day oh. I've been following this valley all morning up alongside this river and it's been really nice it's clouded over a little bit now which is actually much nicer for walking in and we've come to a lock and this is Loch and Nid but I need to be at Loch Fadda which is the other side of these hills so I'm gonna have to cross country a bit I've left the path behind I'm trudging over very boggy terrain I mean, look at this landscape though. It's just a pleasure to be in amongst these mountains. I'm just heading for this slight dip in the mountains and that should take me through to the other side. It has been a long, steep, but very beautiful climb up through this Bilak. We're most of the way up now and we should be up and over the other side and then we can start heading down and into Kinloch U. Now it's just a beeline across country down to the shores of the lock and we'll be on the track then heading into town. Man, that was a bit of a slog. I think I've mentally checked out when I crossed over the Balak and there was still a long way to go. But I've made it to Kinloch uh, campsite. First shower of the, of the whole trip. I'm really excited. Just taking all the strapping off my feet does not look nice down there oh it's so warm right see you all about that is so good i spent the last two days here at uh kinloch u caravan club i've basically just been editing for two days but it's been really good just to give my feet a rest i know i've been avoiding showing you pictures of my feet but if you're squeamish I am going to show you one now I'll tell you when to look again so look away okay you can look back now pretty gross um, but they're doing a lot better now that was when I first arrived two days ago today we are heading up the side of Benahi not quite to the top but skirting around and then down the other side heading on towards Strathcarran. Stopping at that campsite for a couple of days has done me the world of good, particularly in terms of my feet. It's been quite a climb up from Kinloch U and I'm now pretty high up and uh, mountains are incredible up here. They just look like a scree, a like massive piles of scree. now I need to leave the path I need to go out across the moors uh, and basically skirt along the bottom of this mountain this is difficult terrain there's these big boulders and then there's always small rocks under the undergrowth and there's just no path pretty tough going slow going trying to go Sensible, I don't want to get an injury out here. With a big bag, trying to go through this, you have to go really slowly, really deliberate, because any little slip, it could just break your ankle or something too. It's just been very slow going over all these boulders. This is unforgiving country. I'm sweating. 
it's pretty beautiful, but it's been really tough going. I've been walking so much slower than I thought I would. I was hoping to cover quite a lot of ground today, but I don't think that's going to happen now. Uh, I've actually come to this waterfall. Over the other side of this waterfall, I joined back on with a path. So that is the hardest part of today done, which is a big relief. Well, the going definitely got a lot easier once we hit the path. It was actually quite a nice walk down from the mountains and it's turned into a beautiful evening. I camped up just outside this building. This is called the Ling Hut and it's actually like a private boffy. And I just spoke to a guy who's staying in there and I said, do you think it'd be all right to put my tent up outside? And he said, yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. I really didn't get as far as I thought I was going to go today. It was tough, tough going, tough terrain. While I was in Kinloch U, I took the opportunity to restock some food. Unfortunately, the pickings were pretty slim in the little post office and the uh, garage. But uh, luckily the campsite sold some of these like instant meals. The only problem is they're very expensive. Nine pound for one of these. It's the first time I've had to whip this out on this trip so far, which I think is pretty good going. I've uh, moved into the tent to eat my dinner because the midges kind of hard of a head net on. Mm. It's nice. I was actually quite impressed with that food actually. It's filled me up. I'm gonna have a really early night tonight and try and get up earlier. I've been getting up kind of late. I've been starting around nine, getting up around like half seven, eight o'clock. I would like to get up, get going a bit earlier It is just after eight. I was hoping to get off a little bit earlier this morning. I had the worst night's sleep I've had so far on the entire trip. Turns out in the Ling Hut, there are some guys there who are having a bit of a party. They have a generator, which they switched on at midnight and that carried on running until about one in the morning. After that, the whiskey induced stargazing started. And uh, I remember one of the quotes was, oh look, I can see the sun coming up. So. It hasn't been the greatest night's sleep. Not a bad little stomp for the morning. I think it's taken me two hours to get from the very bottom of this valley up to here. Today is gorgeous. And the fact that I am on this path means I can spend a little bit more time looking up and enjoying the view as opposed to yesterday where I spent the entire time looking where I was going, scrambling over boulders. I'm right in amongst the mountains. This is great. I'm absolutely loving it. I just came over the shoulder of this hill here about there. I thought it'd be nice to stop on the side of this lock and uh, have some porridge. It's a gorgeous day. It just makes such a difference. Not having the rain. Just my feet are dry. My feet feel so much healthier for it. It wasn't even walking in the rain. The actual walking itself, like when it was stormy and stuff, was kind of exciting. But the next morning when stuff was still wet, nothing had dried out, putting on wet clothes in the morning, everything was smelling of like damp. That's what sat my mood, was the like continual wet, not the actual rain itself. But this is really nice. Right, porridge time. What a nice spot for lunch and uh, or breakfast really. I had to kind of tear myself away, but we're on the road again. Not far to Strathcarron. I'm gonna try and get up and over the other side today, which will be another climb. Strathcarron is really beautiful. It's in this really lush green valley and there was a little cafe. And as I went in, he said, I've just stopped serving food, but he saw I was hiking and looking pretty tired. So 
He uh, opened up the kitchen for me and cooked me some chips. Oh, just climbing up out of Strathcarran. What a gorgeous setting. So apparently the thing with walking either north or south on the west coast of Scotland is that nearly all of the mountain chains go from east to west. So you have to cross pretty much every one. And which with a big bag, it's kind of tiring. But it has been really, really rewarding. I'm so glad I came out west. Not too much further to go. Being kind of tired. And it's very windy. I made it to the boffy, but there's about seven bikes outside. So I don't think I'm going to be sleeping in there tonight. It turns out that the boffy was occupied. There was about seven Scottish blokes in here who had just come up for the weekend and they bagged my rose and they all have YouTube channels. That's actually how they all found each other through their YouTube channels, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, they were having a bit of a party in here and drinking rum and whiskey. So I joined in with them. I'm happy. I got sunshine. In a bag, I'm useless. And I'm the last. The future is coming on. Then they're up at four o'clock this morning and head off, so it's been not too much sleep. Uh, I've got ma managed to get a couple of hours of sleep after he left. And just to add to it, my uh, trousers have bit of the dust. These trousers saw me all the way through Nepal. They've done well, but the bum has caved in. One fart too many. I'm going to try and do a fairly big hike today. Hopefully get to the top of the Falls of Glamac. It's definitely been tough to leave the buffy this morning. The uh, weather is not the best. It's already raining and I'm heading this way into the rain clouds and uh, I've got a fair old stomp ahead of me today. It's been really, really windy, blowing away the cobwebs left over from the whiskey last night. Apparently the terrain is pretty tough today, but I really want to try and make up the miles to come and see my mates. They're not hikers. I managed to convince them to walk for a few hours out into the highlands to come and meet me. I really want to be there if they, if they actually make it. My target for this bit of off-roading is that boffy over there. This little white building. Looks so amazing in this landscape. This is one of the most remote, habitable buildings in the whole of Scotland. This is the coziest one I've been to. It's really nice. Yet again, another stunning buffy run by the MBA, the Mountain Buffy Association. They're awesome. Thanks, guys. I've got to pass into the next glen now, so I have to climb up and over. It has taken me about an hour to walk up from the Buffy, up through this pass, up through this really wide, uh, nice valley. The road's been pretty good, but it has been pretty boggy. I'm definitely walking with wet feet again, and it's been raining on and off pretty much non-stop. I'm now at the point where I'm gonna start descending again. I've made it to the glen on the other side, and it looks pretty dramatic. It's a very steep descent into this glen. I guess there's no time to start like the present. I've been making my way along the bottom of this valley. I'm about to reach the point where I need to climb out. And this is gonna be a very steep climb. In fact, the guidebook uh, warns that it's actually kind of a dangerous path. Very steep up and very narrow and rocky. I've just got my first sightings of the Falls of Glamac. I think I'm saying it wrong, sorry. This is a waterfall which falls into a big chasm. There's a hundred meters of free fall of water, making it the UK's largest free fall waterfall. <laughs> Although it is a narrow goat path over a massive chasm, it really was bigged up a lot worse than it is uh, in my guidebook 
and on some other videos online. I think if you're maybe afraid of heights, it could be a bit scary. I've now reached at the top of the falls. See if I can find a place to pitch my tent. Oh, the midges are out. This has to be one of the coolest camping spots I've ever stayed at. Right at the top of the tallest waterfall in the whole of the UK. Just gonna eat a bit of food up here, enjoy the view. Just as I'd given up hope, I thought I'd done that big day of walking for nothing. Look who's shown up! Did he ever doubt us? Yes, he did. Uh, there's a, I would say, an 80% chance I'll be there on my own. Oh, cuddles, okay. Cuddles, yeah. oh, it's so nice. I'm just hungry, okay? I've been waiting for my sandwich right. for quite a while. Come on then, let's get, we'll get your tent up as well. These guys have turned up and they've brought the midges with them. There's literally millions. It's crazy. This is the worst I've ever seen it. We've just come up onto this like little raised bit about two meters from our tent. And because there's a bit of breeze, there's actually like not really any midges here. It's really nice. I've only um, got like three midges in it here. If this was down there, it would be literally 3, be midges. 000, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Is there a help? We're all packed up. We managed to get the tents away just as the rain started coming in. And we got a three hour hike back to these guys' van. I think I'm going to hang out with them for a, a couple of days. Man, look at this place. This is incredible. And to be marching through the wilds for so long, to then come to a place like this and be able to share it with some mates, is so good. It's been incredible this week, just through some of the most remote places in the whole of Scotland. Some real big challenging days of walking, but the weather's been good and my feet have been better. I've been really loving it. Check out next week when I finish off the Cape Raft Trail and hopefully get to Fort William, maybe even climb Ben Nevis. <laughs>